so either I accidentally walked into a funeral for some dude named Jesus Christ last weekend, or those motherfuckers spent the whole time talking about the wrong guy. I, I guess this was inevitable, right? I'm, I'm in South Georgia. So after last week's diatribe about the passing of my father-in-law, the odds that I was going to spend this diatribe talking about all the religious bullshit in the funeral were one. And, and, and it's not like this is my first funeral, but holy shit, the dude in the casket was an afterthought. He barely came up. It wouldn't have surprised me of a, a lick if the pastor had referred to him as old what's-his-name at some point. And then when the pastor made way for an old friend of his that wanted to share a few stories of their childhood, we learned that that guy was a street preacher and he spent the vast majority of his time talking about how much more impressive Jesus's death was than my father-in-law's. And, and, and look, when it's a really religious person that dies, it's still tactless, but at least it's understandable, right? Like if I die in a mass shooting, I really hope that y'all politicize the hell out of my death. And if you did, it might not be tactful, Right. But it would be understandable. You'd have my posthumous permission. So like when my wife's Uber Christian grandma's service literally included the pastor giving out the address to his church, along with basic directions, I tamped down my frustration by reminding myself that as tactless as it was, it's exactly what she would have wanted. Right. She would have wanted any filthy atheist that attended her funeral to be confronted with a bunch of Jesus bullshit the whole time. But my father in law wasn't religious. Yeah, I, I mean, if you pressed him on it, he'd probably tell you that he believed in God. He'd probably even tell you he was a Christian, but only in the sense that that's like the default setting on Americans in the South. Right. The, the number of times I've seen him go to church in the 26 years that I knew him was 12 shy of a dozen. I've never seen him pray. Right. I mean, sometimes when his friends or family would stop by to see him towards the end, they'd ask to pray with him and you know, in those cases, he'd play along. He'd listen to their stories about how he was going to get to ride a Harley on streets of gold after he died. But that was about it. Right. Even when it was clear that he was at the very end, he didn't ask for a pastor. He didn't ask Jesus to come into his heart. He didn't spend his time trying to get right with the Lord. And I'd venture to say that he'd have been damn near as bored and pissed off by all the overt religiosity at his funeral that I was. And, and it's not like it was a church funeral, even. We had it at the funeral home nearest to his grave, but that didn't stop the funeral director from just assuming that the whole family wanted to join him in an explicitly Christian prayer beforehand. And, I, you know, look, I get that the family asked a pastor to speak at the funeral. So, of course, he's going to open with a prayer. Of course, he's going to pull quotes out of the Bible. Of course, he's going to frame his eulogy around Christian themes and Christian beliefs about death. I can handle that. But it's not like he's finding biblical passages about coping with loss or about the value of a life well lived. Virtually every sentence he said was some form of, luckily, he was a Christian and you get to see him again if you are too, but don't answer yet. Right. And, and here's the thing. The, the whole time that they're giving their their fucking timeshare pitch, they're also inadvertently demonstrating just how useless their product is. Right. The, the, the whole gist of their message when it wasn't all for the low, low price of seemed to be death doesn't exist. Trust me, pay a no attention to the man inside the coffin. The whole damn service was filled with, I truly believe that death isn't an end this and we never have to say goodbye to our loved ones that. And first of all, any sentence that starts with, I truly believe that, can be dropped into the same bucket you use for sentences that start with, trust me. If you truly believe something, you don't generally need to preface your fucking statement with that fact. Hell, even opening with, I believe that, is suspect, right? But now you're adding how true your belief is? Fuck off. You don't believe that shit. If any of you motherfuckers truly believed we go to paradise when we die, it'd be some dick-ass shit to cry about, wouldn't it? You want the dude to be stuck here in a feeble body that can't breathe without being hooked up to a machine when the alternative is everlasting joy basking in the embrace of Christ and himself? Fuck you, I truly believe. If you follow that through to its logical conclusion, the whole eulogy should just be, I truly believe he's in heaven with Jesus right now, so I don't know what you guys are making such a big deal about. You want to get brunch? But in addition to being bullshit, it's also a terrible way to cope with death. They're telling themselves and each other ever more emphatic lies with the desperate hope of never having to deal with their own mortality or anyone's mortality. In other words, they're actively building barriers to coping. The opening premise of the let's all cope with death speech is there's no such thing as death. What a terrible way to deal with your own grief, but also what a terrible disservice to your loved ones. 
rather than deal with what their loss means to you and thereby acknowledge the importance of their existence, you're just going to pretend you you get to see them again in Act 4? You know, I, I don't think I personally want a funeral, but if there is some kind of memorial or something, I hope people don't insult my memory in the same way. I feel like anybody who speaks at my memorial should have to sign a waiver agreeing that they believe at a minimum that death is for realsies. Because as bad as this world is, the deceased are not in a better place. And to pretend otherwise is to cheapen their memory, to cheapen the importance of their lives. They are nowhere except in your memories of them. They are nowhere but in the echo of their work and their love that they left in this world. And telling yourself that they're hanging out at the blowjob fountain in celestial Disneyland isn't about honoring them. It's a way to push the grief away and avoid coping with it. But to do that is to push them out of your mind, even when that's the only refuge they have left. 